the economics of the business is such that we are bringing ourselves to a natural conclusion. So BNFL signed contracts with a number of overseas utilities in the very late 1960s and early 1970s uh, with the intention that that fuel would be processed through a then existing facility on the Sellafield site. Uh, so the relationships were starting to be built around that time. Um, the early 1970s saw a big push for new reactor build around the world. So there were lots of plans to build new reactors. Uh, the the demand for uranium was growing, the price of uranium went up uh, and also around that time people might recall there was a, an oil crisis. So the oil crisis hit in 1973. That led to uh, a fourfold increase in the price of oil and real concerns about the supply of oil. So increasingly people were looking at other sources of energy. The contracts that we had uh, or that we have um, really fall into sort of two big chunks. There was called the baseload contracts, which were the first 10 years, and then post baseload. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the, the baseload contracts were signed many, many years ago um, with UK customers and customers from uh, overseas. And, and uh, quite a lot of the money was, was paid up front to allow us to build a facility before uh, uh, we operated it. Yes, we had competition, um, but that competition was providing choice for customers. Uh, and that was really important. So it was a very mature understanding of the customer position throughout. And I think that's what characterised it, really, was the customer focus. If you ask me, did I think that the plant was, was profitable? Yes, I do. I think the plant was very profitable. Um, did it provide the services that the customer, customers wanted? Yes, I think they did, because it wasn't just a service to reprocess fuel, it was to provide them with an alternative line of service. So from, from my perspective, I think the plant was and is a success. Well, I think you've got to have a sense of realism around it. You know, Thorpe was built on pre-orders. You know, all the, all the money to, to build Thorpe were, was already uh, Therefore, our investment there was a huge market for reprocessing that simply doesn't exist. You know, it's like if we had a giant factory building Betamaxes, you wouldn't carry on building them years after nobody wanted them. And, and the reality at the moment in the economic cycle is there is no market for reprocessing. So, you know, you're not going to continue uh, down what would be ultimately an unprofitable route. The, as I say, the more I looked into it, the more I thought that Frankly, reprocessing was a nonsense. Any sort of stuff. So, so the government hasn't changed its policy. The government today, if you like, has reflected and, and has seen a different set of economic and world conditions around the value of uranium. Uranium today is is uh, is available from a number of um, politically stable countries, so um, Australia and Canada. Um, so the actual supply of fresh uranium is is cheaper than the reclamation, if you like, of uranium from spent fuel. The decision to build and operate thought was absolutely the right thing. It has been an absolute uh, workhorse. It's been, if you like, an engineering and a science marvel in terms of what it's done. The money that it made from overseas 